This episode of the Dungeon Cast has been brought to you by Hero Forge. Hero Forge has fully customizable tabletop miniatures with dozens of fantasy races and thousands of parts to choose from. Their easy to use design tool lets you build the perfect miniature online using a fully 3D in-depth character creator right in your web browser. There are plastic and metal options for your custom mini. And Hero Forge even offers downloadable model files for users to 3D print their unique designs at home. Plus, they're constantly expanding the catalog of customization options. They're adding new parts every week and major features like races and custom posing on a regular basis. All you have to do is go to HeroForge.com and you can start designing your custom mini today. It's super easy. And don't forget to check back and visit them every now and again because they're always adding new content. One more time, that's HeroForge.com. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Will. I'm Brian. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from ergonomic eidolons to entry level enemies. And today we're covering Elder Elementals. The Dungeon Cast. Hey Brian. Hey Will, what's up, man? <laughs> Uh, not much. Just going to talk about some big elemental monstrosities. Yeah, what are these things? Uh, they're really big, they're really angry, and let's really, get into it. Really old? Elder mm, yeah, elementals? Yeah, they are quite elder. It takes them a while to become elder. So, so they're, because yes. they're elementals, they're not yes. like elder gods. They're not like no. unknowable. No. Okay, sweet. So, we've talked about the many planes of existence in D&D, and we've talked about the many major uh, creatures of the outer planes and of the inner planes. Uh, demons, devils, angels, genies, modrons, etc. But we haven't had much discussion of one of fantasy's biggest tropes and by far the most common entities to be found throughout the various elemental planes. Elementals. Okay. It's in the yeah. name. We did have an elemental planes episode. We did. Where we touched but on But even there, elemental. we didn't really talk about the elements. Yeah, we were just barely scraping the no. surface. I think a part of this is the lack of lore really written about these guys and just the straightforwardness of the beings that they are. Um, this is a fire elemental. It's made of fire. It likes to burn things. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's it's really that simple. It likes to be plasma. Yeah. So these are big. These are very big. These ones are. Okay, but I'm, you're right now, I'm still talking about elementals generally. Oh, okay, speaking. okay. Yeah. Let me know um, when it's you're the big guy. Okay, I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, the fact is that despite technically being intelligent beings, elementals are often depicted as simply being expressions of the element that they are made out of, more instinct than reason. Uh, when it comes down to it, elementals are just really cool monsters to fight, and maybe that's all the explanation most people need for them. Um, either yeah. way, we're diving in and talking about the biggest, baddest types of elementals there are, except for the primordials who are more akin to gods, the elder elementals. It's like, what if I drew fire that could do stuff besides burn, like in terms of like m motion, more, I guess? It's, or? it's it's more like, what if the fire just got so big and burned <laughs> so much and just, yeah, uh -huh. that's basically what these guys are. Um, but before we do that. But it's like got a soul, right? Kind of. Let's have a brief overview of elementals in, in general before mm -hmm. we dive into them. So elementals are incarnations of the elements that make up the universe, air, earth, fire, and water. Depending on addition and setting, elementals are either intelligent, self-aware entities that are made up of the matter of their home plane or little more than animated energy of their planes of existence with no real mind to speak of. On their home plane, an elemental is often a bodiless life force. It's a dim consciousness manifests as a physical shape only when focused by the power of magic. Okay. A wild spirit of elemental force has no desire except to course through the element of its native plane. Like beasts of the material plane, these elemental spirits have no society or culture and little sense of being. They can be and often are called on by spellcasters and powerful beings to take shape and perform tasks. Powerful magic can bind an elemental spirit into... Uh, a material template that defines a specific use or function. So rather than just like summoning uh, an earth elemental, you can summon an earth golem, which is a very specific way of taking that earth spirit and, yes. and, and like molding you, it. Like you need something more refined. Yeah. Like, Instead of an air elemental, you can have an invisible stalker, which nice. we haven't really talked about. We you guys know fought one in the Halloween of, adventure. Yeah. Um, either way, elementals instinctively resent being pulled from their native planes and bound into service. A creature that summons an elemental must assert force of will to control it. Okay. There are also beings called para-elementals, beings composed of two elements simultaneously and forming an entirely new substance. Uh, these would be ice, magma, smoke, and ooze para-elementals. Ooh. I don't believe 5e has stats for any of the para-elementals. Also, um, previous to 4e, there were these beings called quasi-elementals. Essentially, where the elemental planes intersected with the negative and positive planes, which don't really seem to exist in the 5e cosmology, demiplanes formed of new substances. So 
There's ash, dust, lightning, mineral, radiant, salt, steam, and vacuum. Mm. Uh, the elementals of these materials were called quasi-elementals. Uh, 5e has maintained some of these concepts in beings called mephits, which essentially are para- and quasi-elemental implant creatures that will get their own episode. I used mephits in a game one time. I love mephits. They're really cool. You guys fought mephits in the first of all Raiders. Oh. Yeah. That's been a, that was a long that time was a ago. Long time ago. Check yeah. out our Patreon for all yeah. these pools we're making on games <laughs> right, we played. I know, right? So uh, apparently, you like to use elementals a lot. So on they're the, fucking awesome, man. They're great. Yeah. So on the on their native planes, elementals sweep across the weird and temptuous landscapes of fire, air, earth, and water, continuously joining and separating and dividing. Inevitably, at some point, some grow to possess greater power than others, gained by feeding on their lesser kin and adding the essence of creatures that they've devoured into their own until they become something extraordinary and powerful. Mm. Elder elementals are what are born when an elemental has devoured enough power to manifest as beings of apocalyptic capability. God, do they look gross to their other elemental brethren? Like, you ate so many of my brothers. I, yeah, I can see <laughs> they that. don't have enough, like, they don't have enough, like, they don't personality, have anxiety, really. No, yeah, no, like, yeah, because yeah. it's just like a life force embodying yeah. the element. Uh, yeah, it's like also, like, the antelope doesn't look at the lion and be like, you ate so many of our brothers. You know what I mean? What if the antelope... No, 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 no. Because the an, what if the antelope ate the other antelopes and became very huge, though? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'd be like, fuck, man, we gotta stop this guy. <laughs> we gotta stop this mega antelope. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Uh, what the I, fuck? I guess that's a good analogy. All right, Mega Antelope. It's going to make it into somebody's game. <laughs> I know, right? So um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Entities whose mere existence promises destruction. There are four of these elder ele- elementals named in Mordecai and Stoma Foes, one for each major element. Cool. Leviathans, Phoenixes, Zaratans, and Elder Tempests. Ooh. Now, Elder Elementals are not singular creatures. There can be more than one of any of them. Okay. Um, the methods for summoning Elder Elementals, though existent, often remain hidden in forbidden tomes or inscribed on walls of lost temples. Only casters of superlative skill have even the faintest chance of calling forth one of these monsters. The spellcaster is often destroyed by the effort. Thus, only the most unhinged and nihilistic members of evil elemental cults attempt such a summoning in the hope of hastening the world towards some sort of cataclysmic end. Yeah, so there, there's some, instead of like, I can't lich myself, so I'm going to summon a, like a boss monster here. I guess so. Or whatever. It's the same like peril involved where you like lose your physical form. Yeah. Now, I would say that Elder Elementals fall at roughly the challenge rating of a demon lord. Uh, weaker than Fuck. some. Stronger than others. Essentially, if Orcus and an Elder Tempest got into a fight, Orcus would be very busy for quite a long time, but ultimately come out on top. Right. Like, you can put one of these things up against a Demon Lord, and it'll be a good fight. It will be a good fight. That's yeah. wild. Yeah. I did not expect you to tell me the power level was going to be that high. Yeah. Basically, these things are calamitous weather monsters. Storms, volcanoes, earthquakes, and tsunamis. Very difficult things so to So this punch. is, like, short of summoning the Tarrasque or something. Yes. So exactly. this, like, end-level shit. We, in the Tarrasque episode, we talked about summoning all four of these guys to fight. To fight. That's right. Yes, we, did. we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So... Today, we are going to cover the Leviathan and the Elder Tempest, and next week will be an episode covering the Phoenix and the Zaratan. So let's get into it. Nice. So Leviathans are the Elder Elementals of Water. Uh, They are not to be confused with the Forgotten Realms specific entity of the same name. The Forgotten Realms Leviathan was essentially a gargantuan whale-like being that dwelled deep in the oceans that surrounded the Moonshade Isles. It was the child of an entity called the Earth Mother, which some say is one of the aspects of Shantia, the goddess of life, and others say that is the primal spirit that represents the power of the nature on Torrell, which is the planet Faerun is part of. Mm-hmm. Either way, that Leviathan was a living biological creature that died in a novel written in 1989, so who cares? Who, so who cares? <laughs> Leviathan is also the name of a boss in Mega Man Zero. It's also a very, very common summon across the Final Fantasy, so one of my sure favorite is. ones. Um, it, it's used a lot, that, yeah. that moniker. Um, yeah, the it's because it's based off of well I say it at the end of this so I'll tell you in a minute. Yes. Either way the Levi oh wait, the shiny the shiny new 5e Leviathan is an elemental monstrosity of destruction and power. It is a towering wall of water that takes the form of an immense serpent shaped creature. Ooh. It can create tidal waves, swallow ships in its gaping maw and crush coastal settlements with sweeping of its tail. Nice. It is loosely based off of the sea serpent from ancient Judea Christian mythology of the same name. Wow. Uh, and was the counterpart to the Judea Christian mythology logical creature of behemoth cool um, okay and it's also one of my favorite final fantasy summons which i did kind of say earlier i'm picturing the uh season one spoilers for last airbender mm-hmm. uh when ang summons the moon spirit mm-hmm. in like physical form and it's like a big fucking humanoid koi fish mm-hmm. and he's like th- it's a 
towering wall of water, but instead of a snake, it's a koi fish, and he's just like fucking blasting shit. No oh, shit, it's fucking cool. That's super uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I figured when we did these two episodes, it'd be rife with uh, Airbender. It has to be because yeah. there's a, a. I love that show, and yeah. B. There's a ton of news about the live action one oh. being thrown around, so people are like posting a lot of Airbender stuff right now. Cool Great wings. show, go watch it. Yeah. Just popped up on streaming again, I think. Right. So little else is written about this being as it was created for fifth edition in Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. Mm -hmm. uh, but where the lore is scarce, the monster stat block is bountiful. Where are we at right now? It's like a year since Mordenkainen came out? Something like that. It's, yeah. We're right in that yeah. wheelhouse right now. And the thing is, like, if you go to Mordenkainen's uh, Tome of Foes and actually look at like what was written, it's like a little mini paragraph. That's it. That's all you get for each of them. Dope. So I'm doing what I can here with what I got. It's time for you to read the Leviathan stat block. Hell yeah. I got it right here. So tell me all about the Leviathan. I actually went out of my way not to look at it too much just so I could be surprised when you tell me. Oh, shit. nice. I like that. Okay. So <laughs> Leviathan, you're the big guy, even though it's not part of the ordning, it's still very huge. Gargantuan elemental mm -hmm. with a neutral it's actually alignment. actually much bigger than the big guys we've been talking about. Seen even bigger guys. <laughs> um, let's see. Armor class 17. Doesn't specify natural armor, but I mean, are, it it's, is it's like natural. As it's made get. of water. It yeah. is water. <laughs> it's like, OK, so uh, hit points with a beefy 328 mm -hmm. speed, 40 feet movement. I, I'm guessing this doesn't say walking. I guess it's just like how it moves on land. But the swim speed is 120 feet of scary, fast movement. Yeah, that is scary. Strength is 30. Dex is 24. Con is 30. Intelligence is a two. <laughs> so got a so big old minus yeah, four on like that. It's like a big animal. Yep. Uh, wisdom. It's a sea. It has the same intelligence as my seahorse from last it episode. It super does. Okay. So wisdom is 18. Charisma 17. What's uh, the challenge rating on this bad boy? Let's see here. That's actually down here. It's 20. Okay. So it's uh, it's under most of the demon lords just by a, a Like three or four. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, they're like 23, 24, most of those guys. Yeah, somewhere in there. I think uh, the top two, Orcus and Demogorgon, are at 26. Shout out to something Demogorgon. Like, something like that, yeah. yeah. Uh, so saving throws, plus 10 to wisdom, plus 9 to charisma. It has damage resistance, as most high-level monsters should, for bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. Uh, damage, immunities, acid, and poison. It's a big water thing. Mm -hmm. uh, man, poison sucks later. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's useless <laughs> later. I've been noted ever since you mentioned it. I'm like, he, he's right. Yeah, because poison is fucking useless the, later. Poison is for early level yeah, shit. Yeah. You got to poison your party yeah, early. Yeah. Uh, so unless they're dwarves. So uh, condition immunities, exhaustion, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned. Yeah, you're definitely prone. not going to grapple this thing. You're not going to restrain it and you're not going to stun it. You can't do any of that stuff because it's just water. Have you ever restrained water? No, yeah. I, I said it earlier. It's a weather monster. Not without like, a water balloon. You can't punch weather. It's very difficult to punch weather. It is. It's different. I can't shoot a hurricane with my gun. <laughs> no, despite what people in my country think. Uh, <laughs> senses are uh, dark vision, sixty feet, and passive perception is fourteen. It doesn't speak languages. The language. <laughs> well, just, yeah, as an intelligence of two, bro. It's just some fucking dashes. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't speak. I language. was expecting at least like basic commands or like uh, understands Aquin or something. Right. Yeah. yeah anything. Yeah. Uh, nope. <laughs> nope. No. You you tell it you what to do with talk magic. To the weather. I'm getting. I'm getting like if a wizard summoned something like this, it just the magic gives it a directive. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I suppose so. Legendary resistance three times a day. If the Leviathan fails the saving throw, it can choose to succeed it. Partial freeze. Uh, if the Leviathan takes 50 cold damage or more during a single turn, the Leviathan partially freezes. Oh, nice. Uh, until makes the sense. end of its next turn, its speed is reduced to 20 feet, mm. and it makes attack rolls with disadvantage. Oh, nice. So you put so a bunch of ice blocks ice in this magic. thing. Yeah. yeah it's uh, like the opposite of Pokemon, sleet. where water resists ice. You could sleet storm this thing, and it's so big, it's going to be in that area. That's pretty yeah, cool. Okay, But cool. it can move very far from that area, too. If it's underwater, it can. If it's above on land, it's 40 feet only. So it could be. Yeah, but you ain't meeting this thing on land. It's attacking from the coast. I guess it depends. I guess it does. But yeah, depend, you're yeah. probably, if this is the thing the wizard summoned to kill you, you're probably on a boat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or you're my Triton guy. Yeah, and he's or that. fucking shitting his exactly. pants right now. Um, <laughs> How yeah. fast can my Seahorse move? Let's stop Not talking that about fast. him. Yeah. Siege monster. The Leviathan deals double damage to objects and structures. Oh, that poor boat. Uh, yeah, the boat, including in Tidal Wave. Well, Tidal Wave is capitalized. What is that? It probably has a thing. Oh, like, oh, yeah, it does later. Uh, okay, so water form. Uh, the Leviathan can enter a hostile creature space and stop there. 
fuck. Oh, it can drown you in itself. <laughs> it can move through a space as yeah. narrow as one inch wide without squeezing. Mm-hmm. Yum, yum, like mm-hmm. a mouse. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, multi-attack for the actions. Uh, the Leviathan makes two attacks, one with its slam and one with its tail. So the slam is melee weapon plus 16 to hit. That's better than big dragons. Mm-hmm. Um, reach 20 feet, one target. Uh, it does 15 or 1d10 plus 10 bludgeoning damage plus 5 1d10 acid damage. Tail is plus 16, 20 feet range. Acid damage, huh? That's interesting. Yeah, I've seen some water stuff do acid. Mm. Mm. Um, plus 16 to hit for the tail, 20 foot reach, one target. Uh, it's 16 or 1d12 plus 10 bludgeoning damage plus 6 1d12 acid damage. God damn. Some, some saucy water, yeah. bro. This water spicy. Mm-hmm. Uh, tidal wave, it's a recharge on a 6. It just okay. says recharge six, so I'm assuming a D6. Yeah, a D6. And That's a D-roll really uh, low recharge rate. Which means it's probably going to be beefy yes. attack. It's long. Oh, is uh, it? Okay. So I'll get through it quick. While submerged, Leviathan magically creates a wall of water centered on itself. The wall is up to 250 feet long, up to 250 feet high, and up to 50 <laughs> feet thick. Oh, God. Fuck. Yeah. When the wall appears... Uh, this is like a Final Fantasy ender. Yeah. Uh, when the wall appears, all other creatures within its area must each make a DC 24 strength saving throw. Strength. No one's Sorry, saving wizard. that, dude. 24? I mean, the pally or the barb, yeah, maybe. maybe. On a good roll. On a good roll. Uh, a creature takes 33 6d10 bludgeoning damage on a failed save or half wait, as wait, much. Say it again. Sorry. So okay. you take 33, which is 6d10, or uh, okay. bludgeoning damage on a fail okay, or half 6D10. as much on your success. Okay. You're okay. not avoiding this wall of water. Okay, that's not so bad. 60 is not so bad. I got like two more paragraphs. Oh, God. Okay, let's hear it. At the start of each of the Leviathan's turn, after the wall appears, the wall, along with any other creatures in it, moves 50 feet away from the Leviathan. So this wall is moving. Oh, you travel with the wall. Oh, no. Any huge or smaller creatures inside the wall or whose space the wall enters when it moves must succeed on a DC 24 strength saving throw. Okay. Or take 27 more or 5d10 more bludgeoning damage. Okay, it's a continuous thing. Yeah, this is every turn. DC that's quite high. And you're moving a lot and you're dealing with, oh, man, like... A flying paladin would be real cool. Yeah. Uh, at the end of each turn, the wall uh, moves the walls. Hi- uh, sorry, let me start again. A creature. This is after the bludgeoning damage. A creature takes this damage no more than once on a turn. At the end of each turn, the wall moves. The wall's height is reduced by 50 feet. So it's like kind of shrinking as it moves. Uh, which, yeah. As a 250 tidal wave would feet, do. though. You know, that's a few turns. Yeah, so, yeah, four or five turns. And the, uh, the damage creatures take from the wall on subsequent rounds is reduced by 1d10. Okay, so uh, when the wall reaches zero feet, so after those like five turns or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, it all all those effects end. Okay, so yeah. a creature caught on the wall can move by swimming. Uh, because of the force of the wave, though, the creature must make a successful DC 24 strength athletics check to swim during <laughs> the thing. You're just caught in this tsunami. Yeah. So tidal wave. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's go back it's to. Pretty badass. Uh, the siege monster, the Leviathan, deals double damage to objects and structures, including those that are inside this oh, tidal wave. Okay, so buildings, all that are getting just fucked up by yeah, that tidal wave. Yeah, because you gotta you gotta think if you're DMing this move and yeah. it's running through a town, it's yeah. gonna pick up yeah. 250 feet of the town. This would be an epic ass fight to run. Holy oh shit. hell yeah. yeah. Um so the legendary actions is Leviathan can take three legendary actions, mm-hmm. choosing from the options below. Yeah. Uh slam, the slam attack. You can it costs oh, two of its slam. actions. Sorry. So uh Leviathan makes one slam attack or uh or move. The Leviathan moves up to its speed. So okay. this thing can just like uh, tidal wave on a really crazy turn. It can tidal wave next turn, recharge legendary action, move around and make another tidal wave, I guess. You know, if this thing can make like <laughs> pincer attack, crush you with two tidal waves. <laughs> oh my gosh. Tidal wave moving through a tidal wave. Uh, I don't even want to get into the logistics of that yeah. on this, on this show right that's now. Too funny. Um, yeah, that's it. That's the stat block right there, man. Nice. That's a big beastie, but I think it's time for a short rest. Yep. <laughs> Hey everybody, be sure to check out Super, Super Quest, Quest Saga. Saga, a future fantasy 5th edition D&D actual play podcast home brewed and dungeon mastered by yours truly, me, and set in space. And I play in it, along with your special guest Jake and friend of the show, Josh Freeland. You can find it on YouTube, iTunes, or anywhere else you can get your podcasts. Super Quest Saga! All right, we've returned. We've returned. We're back. It's so short. <laughs> and t- time to talk about the next Elder Elemental on our list, which is 
the Elder Tempest. Yum. Mm. Uh, which is uh, the Elder Elemental of Air and also the most por- powerful of the four that we're going to be talking about. Oh, shit. My yeah, sky baby? The biggest of the boys. My your sky s- baby. My sky guy. <laughs> yeah, your sky guy. Uh, a being carved from clouds, wind, rain, and lightning, the Elder Tempest assumes the shape of a serpent with many wings that slithers through the sky. Fucking Rayquaza up there? Yes, it's Rayquaza. Yes. Crazy, yes. Which is... <laughs> Uh, based off of Quetzalcoatl, as is this, uh, yeah. I so, got you. Yeah. It's uh, mere presence causes a massive thunderstorm with the Elder Tempest. Sorry. Uh, note on the Rayquaza thing is, uh-huh. as I was doing research from this, I realized that, it, it, at least it seems obvious to me, that both Kyogre and Groudon are based off of Leviathan and Behemoth. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. Anyways, back to this. Getting biblical up on that Pokemon. Yeah, indeed. Uh, my research takes me to strange places. Uh, it's a mere, it's mere presence causes a massive thunderstorm. With the Elder Tempest at it at the center. The Tempest drowns the land beneath it with rain and stabs the earth with lances of lightning. Punishing winds scream around it as it flies, feeding the chaos it creates. Fuck you, Earth. Shank. <laughs> Furthermore, terrifying storms manifest within its body, um, or within the body of the Elder Tempest. The Elder Tempest definitely seems to be loosely based off the Mesoamerican deity, Quetzalcoatl. Right. The winged serpent god of wind, air, learning, and the dawn, among other things. It varies depending on the culture and myths that surround the winged serpent. Nice. And that's it. Little more than a single paragraph of lore was ever written about the Elder Tempest because it wasn't invented until Morton Kynes Tomophos for 5e d d <laughs> But it's got a big stat block. Oh, yeah. I will say that the next two Elder, elder Elementals that we're going to talk about next episode, the Phoenix and the Zeratan, have much more extensive lore. Both entities existed in previous editions and are now being retconned into this whole Elder Elemental category. Just dip into, um, what is it, uh, Emerald? version Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There's there all the lore you need. It's all you need. Uh, but yeah, so stat block, Brian. All right, I'm, you're, I'm you're here to go. For, I'm it's here an for even you. bigger one than last time. Oh, man. The photo of this thing is really cool. It is. It yeah. does look reminiscent of Rayquaza, just with like wings. Yeah, and it's got more of like a snake face on it, like yeah. serpent face. Yeah. That's It's fucking cool. It's like a big cloud. Yeah, um, yeah. Elder Tempest is gargantuan elemental. It's neutral, just like the water one. Uh, armor class is 19, a little bigger. Uh, 264 HP though it's a little smaller uh, <laughs> it doesn't have any movement speed but it can fly 120 feet uh, in the air it's a hover speed mm-hmm. uh, okay so strength is 23 dex is 28 con is 23 intelligence minus 2 so that's going to be common I bet it's that yeah. for all of them wisdom yeah. 21 and charisma 18 uh, saving throws plus 12 to wisdom plus 11 to charisma uh, bludgeoning piercing slashing from non-magical attacks is damage resistance uh, damage immunities, lightning, poison, thunder. Uh, I mean, you can't poison a cloud, you know what I mean? Sure well, can't. I guess you could with, like, toxic fumes, maybe. Nah, it just absorbs that yeah, shit. Yeah, I guess so. It, it just becomes part of the Elder Tempest. Now now the Rayquaza is part poison. I, isn't it? Uh, I don't want... I'm, hey, science community, check this one out. Uh, I'm going to try to do a backflip off this table. Uh-huh. Uh, I think in the upper, upper atmosphere, the wind moves so violently that it, like, is a cleanser of some kind. Oh, I can see that. Uh, anyway. That's an interesting... Put it in this thing's body. Put that in this thing's body. There we hey, go. science community, did I stick the landing? <laughs> Fuck me up in the comments below. <laughs> uh, so, uh, dark vision, sixty feet. Passive perception, fifteen. Languages, is, it speaks dashes. Uh, challenge rating is twenty three. Yes. Sorry, I don't want to say it's, when I say it speaks dashes. I mean it, it doesn't no speak language. anything. Yeah. I need to be. More, it does not speak. <laughs> that was a joke. Mm-hmm. Uh, air form. Uh, the Tempest can enter a hostile creature's space and stop there. Oh, much like Leviathan. Mm-hmm. It can move through a space as narrow as one inch wide without squeezing. Fly by. The Tempest doesn't provoke opportunity attacks when it flies out of an enemy's reach. That's kind of like the um, that gaseous form monster. Or what is it? The, just an air mm-hmm. elemental, right? Yeah. Do you remember when we did the wizard episode and you did the read for that? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did the read from uh, Legend of Huma. Yes. Legend of yes. Huma. Yes. Uh, and there was like a gas, a, a fog cloud yeah. monster. It was Air elemental. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that reminded me of that. Uh, <laughs> call, call back to the early days. Legendary resistance. Fail saving throw. Let's just save it three times a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, living storm. Cool oh name. Oh, boy. Uh, the Tempest is always at the center of a storm, much like your lore said. Mm-hmm. 1d6 plus 4 miles in diameter. Mm. Uh, heavy precipitation in the form of either rain or snow falls there, causing the area to be lightly obscured. Um, so lightly obscured is like a... 
like a you're you're hidden a little bit. You get a bonus to like range attacking and stuff. Yeah. Uh, heavy rain also extinguishes open flames and uh, imposes disadvantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on hearing. Oh, nice. That's cool. With all that thunder. Uh, I feel and like that's that, wind. that gets away from some people sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, get I those ears, so. mer- get mm. this, get the nose going. That's something I've been working on. Right. Right. Uh, in addition, strong winds swirl in the area covered by the storm. The winds impose disadvantage on ranged attack rolls. The winds extinguish open flames and disperse fog. So real quick, um, I d- maybe you said it and I didn't catch it. What was the challenge rating? Uh, challenge rating was 23. Okay, so, so now we're there. like stronger than Jubilex and Zuck Moy, but weaker than the rest. I guess that AC is really meaningful. That extra 2 AC or whatever off of the... Because the, the, the HP is 328 for the Leviathan and uh-huh. 264 for the Tempest. It probably is meaningful, but there's probably more damage output. Oh, yeah. Well actually, the, you're probably right. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, the temp, oh, sorry, siege monster, the tempest deals double damage to objects and structures. So these are literally like forces of nature meant to fuck up the place you live. Yeah, they're weather monsters. This yeah. one represents hurricanes. Cool. So the, <laughs> the, the multi-attack here is the tempest makes two attacks with its, with its thunderous, uh, thunderous slam. So the thunderous slam is a melee weapon attack with plus 16 to hit reach of 20 feet and one target, uh, 23 or 46 plus nine thunder damage. Mm-hmm. So lightning storm is a re- the recharge on six feature. Oh, okay. So, it's got another big weather attack. Mm-hmm. Cool. All other creatures with a 120 feet within 120 feet of the tempest must each make a DC 20 dexterity saving throw. That's a lot more manageable. I feel like Dex. Yeah, dexter. but also that's everybody. There's no. That's a huge like, range. The, yeah. I mean, the other one's a huge range too, but you might be on the other side of the tidal wave. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's, it's a possible. line. This is just everywhere. Yeah. So you're going to take 27 or 68 lightning damage on a failed save, or mm-hmm. half as much on a success. If a target saving throw fails by five or more, that's a scary sentence. Mm-hmm. The creature is also stunned until the Ooh. end of its next turn. Stun is brutal. You just don't get a turn. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, so the legendary actions, uh, this creature takes three, uh, choosing from the options below. So you can move, Tempest moves up to its speed, uh, lightning strike, which costs two actions. Mm -hmm. The Tempest can cause a bolt of lightning to strike a point on the ground anywhere under its storm. So that 120 foot, um, diameter, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Yeah, each creature within five feet of that point must make a DC 20 dexterity saving throw, taking 16 or 3d10 lightning damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. The Screaming Gale. This takes all three of the legendary oh, actions. Shit. So the Tempest releases a blast of thunder and wind in a line that is one mile long oh, and shit. 20 feet wide. Can you imagine seeing something appear yeah. out of fucking a monster that's a, yeah. a mile long? long? And 20 feet wide, Holy yeah. Holy shit. A mile long. Uh, objects that uh, in that area take 22 or 40 10 thunder damage. Each creature there must succeed on a DC 21 dexterity saving throw or take 22 or 40 10 thunder damage and be flung up to 60 feet in a direction away from the line. Ooh, uh, that's, that's dangerous. Bad. That's real bad. If a thrown target collides with an immovable object, such as a wall or floor, the target takes three 1d6 bludgeoning damage for every 10 feet it was thrown before the impact. So it's like half fall damage, kind of. Yeah. Uh, if the target would collide with another creature instead, that other creature must succeed. Like if there's another elemental around, <laughs> yeah. that other creature must succeed on a DC 19 dexterity saving throw or take the same damage and be knocked prone. God damn. So you can kind of like curb the damage on like hitting a, yeah. a squishy. It's just calling down lightning sending like wind laser beams blasting people all about it's like, like doing yeah. the kamehameha level like the line in the ground yeah, that this thing must really cause is. i know it's fucking That's shooting badass. off the fucking curvature of the earth yeah, sorry flat earthers yeah i um, er- i call them flat earthers oh for sure <laughs> Uh, the um, the fight between Orcus and this guy would be truly epic. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's that's amb- that's a ambitious fight right. to run. It, oh yeah. God, you gotta I, know I all this stuff. But, yeah. Um, any questions about the Elder Tempest before we move on to our long rest? Oh uh, god damn. Yeah, he's a big god boy. Damn, these things he, are fucking yeah, huge. Indeed. I, I'm not really seeing. I, I am. It's huh. the damage output, like you said. It's yeah, like, it's the damage output. It's and the range that better, you're... Even better AoE than the tidal wave. Yeah. And then that uh, legendary action, which you can do basically every round. And it flies. And it Flying flies. is super important. Yeah. So and you can can't get, range attack it, can it real get, good. Yeah, and it can get out of your range and still call lightning in 120 foot distance. It so. can blast you from a mile away. It can blast you from a mile away. And you can't hear this bad boy. Uh-uh. 
Well, so, you hear thunder, I guess. I think uh, long yeah. rest is in order. Let's do it. Uh, it's long rest time, William. And Indeed. I've got my slippies made of air and water, respectively, on each foot. <laughs> Sounds real uncomfortable. It's, Very uh, cold. Real uncomfortable. Kind of icy. Kind of, oh. like, shocking me a little bit. But I'm oh. going to wreak havoc to buildings and structures across the land. I mean, this is the only way to do it. Uh, it's probably just going to be like my bed and my wall because I'm going to be asleep. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, uh, thanks for um, all the support, everybody. Indeed. Uh, so here's the thing. Um, the contest is over. Contest has been over for well, we a couple weeks by this point that you're hearing this, but yeah, we can't announce it, but it's because the day, it's the it'll day be before. over for us tomorrow. Right. It's the day before the contest and subsequently the day before Will's birthday. So happy oh, birthday, Will. Thank you. It was like a week ago. So fucking oh, yeah. get at us and yeah, tell true. Will happy birthday oh, anyway. Gosh. You don't but, have to, please. <laughs> uh, I'm telling you to. So get out there and, uh. Tell people about the dungeon cast anyway if you want, because that was the whole point of the contest. So it thank was, you guys. Sure. Um, As I remember, there's not just one winner. There's three winners. Oh, there right are three, there. Winners, there are three yeah. winners. They'll already have been announced on Twitter and stuff. Yeah, you, we, go out there. You can find information for that. If if you won, we contacted you already. All that yeah. shit. You could win a, a essentials kit. Are we gonna do another giveaway in the future? Of course. Soon. Mm, we'll see. I know the book Theros book is coming out. It's is like it alternate D and D? Is, what is I've it been coming reading. out in September? It's coming out in July. July? What? I don't. I don't know. I don't okay. actually know. Yeah. Um, I'll look into it. But anyway, we had one more thing to talk about. Oh, we're gonna be on a panel um, yeah. for a convention. Yes. We got invited to a convention by some very nice people. We did. Um, Unfortunately, the plague happened. And then there was a plague, though. <laughs> so you can't go to conventions anymore. We were gonna sit live in another state on a panel yeah. for the first time ever. Yes. Um, it's not the first convention we've been invited to, but it's the first one where they're like really want us there and we're yeah. gonna like fly us out and stuff. So, yeah. um, we really pre it's gonna it's called Sci Fi Con. Sorry, there's like a plane I, flying in the background. Is it actually <laughs> showing up on the uh, audio? I, I bet people can hear it in their cars and stuff. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> we're, we're on Sci Fi Con. Mm -hmm. Um, we're still going to run an online panel. Uh, I don't know the, all of the details of exactly how you can like get to. To do, basically, me and Will are going to run a. Uh, we're going to go over some of our favorite monsters oh, that cool. we've um, we've covered, and um, so like the gelatinous cube. Yeah, we're going <laughs> to we're going to simulate some combat scenarios and talk about like the more logistical parts of like rather than lore, some of the more mechanical things, setting up encounters and how you want to do that and things like that. We're basically just going to run a monster panel, mm -hmm. and uh, we can, we're going to stream it pretty much. Um, yep. So there will be some details on that soon. It's like a month away. We're going to be doing it in July. Uh, we're still working with the team at Sci-Fi Con to get some of these things wrapped up since there was like a big shift in how things were getting done. Um, but we do have a, a communication line open with them. So if you guys want to come and see that, there will be details soon. And we would love if you came and supported us. Indeed. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Let's right. call it a game. Right, let's call it a game. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye. 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 Dungeon Cast.